Welcome to TPF, Trips, Places, and Fun, where we talk about how to enjoy family adventures both close to home and when traveling. Today, I'm going to share 15 travel tips that will make your next adventure amazing. We're gonna do this right now, let's go. So my name is John, this is TPF. We love to talk about travel. We love to travel, Amy and I, and we do it quite often. Over the years, we have learned some things on what to do, what not to do when traveling. I'm sure several of you have learned some things as well. I would love to hear what your travel tips are in the comments below. Go ahead and share those right now. But let's get right into this. First of all, before I actually start talking about these 15 different tips, consider the two different type of trips that you might take. The first one is the big planned out adventure the long there's a long process where we are months in advance or even years we're planning on this vacation it could be an orlando vacation disney world universal studios could be an overseas trip could be a cruise and those are fun those are absolutely a blast to prepare for ahead of the trip you're considering what you're going to do where you're going to go when you get there what type of attractions what what hotel restaurants and you're planning it out a long time in advance. And those are my favorite kind of trips, of course, because you've got this great gigantic buildup and then finally you're on the plane or you're in the car and you're on your way and you're having the time of your life. So those are the big trips. You also have short trips. Very often, Amy and I will take a short trip. We'll even in a moment, a spontaneous idea, hey, let's get in the car, let's drive two hours away. In fact, there was another video, you might check it out, where we went to Lake of the Ozarks, right up here, I'll put a card and you can watch that. We just decided to take a day trip, head up to the Lake of the Ozarks, and we had so much fun. And so short trips, long trips, there are ways to prepare. Of course, there's different things that we'll do depending on how far away from home we're going to be. But let's look at these 15 tips, and most of these tips uh, are going to apply to, to both short and long trips, but definitely long trips, definitely for sure long trips. Let's look at these. Number one, take lots of photos. You've gotta take photos, tons of them. Uh, there are people that they'll go on trips and I'll know they're on vacation and they're going to somewhere fun, to the ocean, uh, to, a, to a lake, they're on a boat, they're at a theme park, they're overseas, and I'm, I'm waiting for photos and they never show up. Or maybe one or two show up. When we go on vacation, I'm nonstop, probably even overboard, where I'm taking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pictures. Uh, I'm taking pictures of, if we're at Disney World, all sorts of attractions and rides, and I'm taking videos, and you know the uh, the the fireworks at the end, and having people to hold our camera to take a picture of Amy and me, taking pictures of us while we're on Splash Mountain, and oh, by the way, check out our new Splash Mountain ride along, our full ride video. Here's a card right up here, and you can go ahead and click on that, and you can watch us just have so much fun, Parker, Amy, and me on Splash Mountain. But I wouldn't have had that memory if I didn't have the video. I know it seems like common sense, especially today when, when everybody's sharing videos and you're, everyone's Instagramming everything and putting it on Facebook. But a lot of people really don't think to take a lot of photos and I'm not sure why that is. It's so much fun. I do this all the time. I'll go to our YouTube channel or go to my photos on my computer and I'll just watch videos or look at pics and just reminisce and remember how much fun we had. There's so much magic at Disney World, for example, and I'll just watch that and enjoy the, the memories and the times you know that we had there. And I'll do that for years and years and years after we go and I'll look back. I'll look back when my kids were tiny and so photos, take lots of photos. That's definitely number one. Number two, number two, these are 15 travel tips. Take extra cash, but also extra credit cards. Don't rely, this is of course, especially if you are going far away from home. Do not rely on one form of payment. Here's a reason why. It's happened a few times when we've been on trips away from home where we've used our credit card and we're as careful as anybody. We'll use a credit card to pay for dinner or to get coffee or whatever it is that we need to do, the gas station. But our credit card has been compromised. And so there we are, for example, in Orlando, it happened on our last trip and our credit card is compromised and somebody's buying crazy things. I don't even remember what they bought. But now the credit card company has to cut off our credit card. And there we are 
in Orlando, not only far away from home, but needing still to pay for a lot of things. So we needed to have extra credit cards and thank goodness we did. We had extra credit cards and we were able to use them. Cash by all means, and now I'm not a cash person. I never carry cash on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't like using cash. I prefer just to use the card wherever I go. That's my typical life. But when traveling, using cash for a few reasons is, is a really good idea. Number one, use it where you think your credit card might be compromised. Maybe it's a maybe it's a pop-up stand, you know, a hot dog stand or something at a convention, or you're not really comfortable with giving someone your credit card or you know, whatever that might be. And so you have some cash that you can use to buy what you need uh, to buy. Other things, believe it or not, will only take cash. Uh, e even still today, a vending machine or something like that. and Or, or tolls. There are some tolls out there where you still have to have, cap have cash. So number two, take extra credit cards, take extra cash. Tip number three, consider your pace. Consider your pace. Amy and I tend to go about 20 times as fast and as hard when we're on vacation than we do when we're at home. We, we burn out. We are up at 7 a.m. on our way to a theme park or wherever we're going. We're there all day and we're back home by like one or two in the morning. And it is, it's madness. And of course you can't do that every single day. Well, you, you know, and this, again, this tip is about considering your pace. So we might do that a couple of days in a row, but then the following day we'll know that we need to take a break. So we can't schedule another park um, early that day. We might go, or we might go early and then get off, get out of there at 5 PM, get some dinner and then just lay out at the pool the rest of the day and relax. But consider your pace. You know, you may be completely different than us. Maybe you are, you would rather take it slow. There are a lot of people out there. Their idea of vacation actually is a vacation where they want to relax. They want to lay out at the beach, at the lake. They want to go to a cabin in the mountains. They want to relax. Well, consider the fact that you possibly might get bored. So is there something that you can add into your vacation uh, to give you some excitement to, to add, you know, uh, maybe it's a, maybe it's a, a show or maybe it's uh, an attraction or a special meal or something like that. So consider your pace, work that out, especially on your longer trips. Now, of course, your shorter trips away from home, you're just going and you're running and gunning and you're back home uh, in the you know same day or overnight. So that doesn't really matter as much, but when you are out uh, and, and far away from home on a longer trip, definitely consider your pace. Number four, use TripAdvisor, use Google, use Facebook, use them to research. Now you can't completely, fully, perfectly rely on them so you might want, you might have heard good things about a specific place. You go to TripAdvisor, you see some bad reviews. Well, you can't immediately eliminate that. If you see a bad review, look and see how the ownership or the management responds to the review. Do they respond in a professional manner? Well, you can have some confidence that that might be a good place to visit, whether it's a restaurant or an attraction. Uh, but definitely use TripAdvisor as just on your longer trips as you are considering you know, where you're going to go every single day. It'll help. It'll help you map all of that out. Even on your shorter trips, when Amy and I went up to Lake of the Ozarks, we had never been there before. And so we were wondering exactly what to do. So we're jumping on TripAdvisor, things to do in Lake of the Ozarks. We're, we're fine. We went to a, a state park there, which was a lot of fun. We also went, went to the dam, did some different things, but we, we used social media. We used a uh, review sites, Google and Definitely, definitely do that. Don't just chance it. Don't just go somewhere because it looks cool. Definitely look it up. We have saved ourselves a lot of grief by reading the reviews. Number five, oh, by all means, take with you battery packs, a power strip, uh, your laptop if you need that on vacation. I know for me, I need to, on the longer trips, I'm taking my laptop because I'm still kind of sort of working a little bit. I may need to jump in and work on the website or fix something in our booking system. We own a business here in Branson, Missouri, uh, an escape room called Escape Code and also axe throwing uh, called the Axe Game. So I might need to do something on my laptop. So I always have my laptop with me on these longer trips, but I always have 
battery pack extra power. Like I said, I'm taking a lot of videos, taking a lot of photos. So the first, you know, three or four hours of the day, I'm just using my phone or whatever device. In fact, I'm gonna share a device with you in a moment that I just got today. That's so cool. But whatever device I'm using, I'm, I'm using that a lot. And then after the first few hours, if you see me, I'm gonna have my battery in my pocket and my USB plugged into the, to my device, to my phone. And so the rest of my day I'm tethered, but I always have power. So I'll go to Disney World and we'll get there at eight in the morning. Uh, and I'll leave at midnight or 1 a.m. or whenever they close and I'll still have 100% power because I have battery packs. And so I don't only bring one, I have a big battery pack that lasts a long time. I have a secondary battery pack that lasts a long time. Then I'll have power strips. Power strips are definitely important if you're going into the hotel and older hotels, the power options are not good. And so uh, to have a power strip is helpful. So that's tip number five, bring lots and lots of power. Overdo it, don't underdo it. Bring more than you think you might need. Number six, number six. This won't relate to all of you, but some of you. If you are flying out of an airport that is not close by, for example, we live in Branson, Missouri, and we usually fly out of Springfield, uh, Missouri. Sometimes we're gonna fly out of Northwest Arkansas. So Springfield's an hour away, a little less than that. Uh, Northwest Arkansas is about two hours away. And uh, Branson has an airport that has limited destinations. So that's great if we can fly directly out of Branson. Uh, sometimes we'll even fly out of Kansas City or St. Louis. But here's the point. Even if I'm driving to Springfield and my flight is a 6 a.m. flight, I am typically going to be staying in a hotel in Springfield. Instead of having to get up at two or three in the morning, I'll stay at a hotel right next to the airport. I can roll out of bed. It's a small airport, so I don't have to be there very early. And I can be at the airport at 5 a.m. and uh, wake up at 4.30 a.m. or 4.15 a.m. And, and it helps a lot. You would you'd be shocked at how much it helps to have that extra hour of sleep. So I would encourage you, if you have an early flight, when you're leaving home for a destination, stay in a hotel, pay that 100 bucks or that 80 bucks or whatever it is, stay in a hotel and you'll be refreshed because then whenever you get to where you're going, you are going full steam ahead and you're gonna be having fun and visiting places and getting into the rental car and whatever and expending a lot of energy. So you're gonna want to definitely be refreshed. All right, number seven, number seven. Oh, you might disagree with this one, but I'll explain this. Number seven, don't worry about the money when you're there. The, the, the worst thing that you can do, financially speaking, in my opinion, is, is kind of damper the excitement by stressing out about how much things cost and where, you know, and should, you know, should I do this and should I not do that? And I'm bummed because I don't think I probably should spend my money there. And, but then what if I, get home and I regret not enjoying that experience or whatever. On your longer trips, resolve all of that or as much as you can before you leave. So, so have some sort of an idea of how much money you're going to spend. So random number, let's say you're gonna spend $2,000 on a vacation. You map it, map it all out and you understand that your airfare is gonna cost so much and your car is gonna cost so much and your hotel and the attractions. And then you're left with X number of dollars. Use it, spend it. Don't, don't, don't just pocket it away. You are on vacation. Now, don't go crazy and go beyond the amount that you had predetermined if, you, if it's not available. I mean, something you may be very limited, most of us are, and what we can spend. So don't, don't wound your finances by, by going beyond what you determined early on that you could go ahead and spend. But once you get there and you've got this pile of money, go ahead and, and, and consider how you're gonna use that and then use it. Don't stress out about, about buying a, a, an $8 ice cream sundae at Disney World. Don't stress out about maybe having a nicer dinner than you typically would back home. You're on vacation, have fun, all right? Number eight, this is where I'm gonna talk about a brand new device that I got I just got it literally this morning. I've been doing loads of research on this thing and I just barely started to, started to mess with it. And in fact, I haven't really messed with it at all. I've unboxed it, I've turned it on, I've charged it and I've taken a couple pics and that's it. This, my friends, 
is the DJI Osmo Pocket. I'm gonna go ahead and take it out of its case. This little sucker is absolutely amazing. Look how small this is. I mean, here's my hand. Look how small that sucker is. And this is a video camera that takes still pics too, and a gimbal that gives you beautiful, beautiful uh, video. It's stabilized. And watch this, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. It's like a little robot. It can be your robot friend too if you get along with it. Look at that. So you can see it there. It's got a screen on the front. So, so I can walk around and I can record in 4K 60 frames per second. And if I want, if I need to go into selfie mode, if I wanted to do a video like this one, I just do this, click it three times, and boom, it turns around. It'll follow my face, wherever my face is. And you can't see it right now, but on the screen, it's following my face, so everything's staying nice and steady. If you're running, it's gonna keep steady uh, when you're running. And so just, just take a look at that little guy. Isn't he just adorable? It's the DJI Osmo Pocket. Brand new device, just came out at Christmas time. And so this will give you, from what I understand, about an hour and a half, maybe a little more, of battery life. And when you start running low, you'll just plug your USB-C uh, right into the bottom there and connect it to your battery pack and you keep on going. But this is, this is a brilliant device. I'd encourage you to look it up on YouTube. Of course, I'm not gonna give you a tutorial here, but it's a great device. Uh, or I didn't mean a tutorial, I meant a review, a full review. I'm not gonna do that here, but check it out. It's really cool. It is $349. It's something that you can use. I'm gonna use it on this channel to do really professional level video. Um, it's not, of course, going to be as great as your DSLRs and all of that, but it's really, really, really good. Really great quality. And so you can put that in a pocket. It's the Osmo Pocket. Put it in your pocket, take it with you, and you, and you are able to take beautiful, beautiful video. So that is tip number eight. And by the way, I paid, my, I paid money for that. No one's paying me to, uh, to review that. And, but I'm just so excited about it and I just got it today. I thought I'd throw it in here. So get that little sucker, it's great for travel. Number nine, number nine, eat great food. Eat great food. That's something Amy and I love to do when we go out and hit the road. You know, again, we're big Disney fans or big Orlando fans and so we talk about that a lot. But uh, when we go to Disney, we love doing the dining plan. So you, you pay in advance with a dining plan and then when you get there, you just go mad. I mean, you are eating the best of the best. People ask me where the best place is to eat in Orlando in my opinion of course there's a ton of places to eat in Orlando but in my opinion it's the it's the Disney restaurants restaurants you're gonna find in the parks or at the resorts and you should absolutely have a great time create some great memories eating great great food because probably where you're from you're not gonna have those same restaurants you can go down to Disney Springs or you can go I'm just thinking Orlando you can go really anywhere and find some pretty amazing restaurants there's Brazilian uh, steak houses, which I love those. And of course, if you're overseas or you're uh, in, a, in a different area, let's say you go to New Orleans, man, you got to eat the New Orleans food. Eat local if you can. Uh, eat, you know, if you're overseas, get some good French food or wherever you are. Enjoy the food. The food is going to give some amazing memories. And yeah, go ahead, like everybody does, take pictures of it. This little guy, I'm sure he's going to love taking pictures of all of the great food that we're going to be eating on trips that are coming up. All right, number 10. Number 10 this is what we're all trying to do. Beat the crowds. Beat the crowds. Oh, it's so maddening when the crowds are crazy. It would be a lot easier. And come on, somebody, if, if people would know how to walk in a, in a, in a, in a theme park, you know, some, for some reason, if they're a family of five, they like to walk five wide and then they'll stop right in the middle of the, and, and look at the map on their phone. And, 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 but crowds, consider the crowds. There's ways to do that, you know, and again, really we're thinking theme parks here, but this is true. You know, if you're gonna go skiing, if you know, really, uh, if you're gonna go to the beach, and so many different places, consider the crowds, consider that, you know, when you're planning, when you're able to go. So there are times, of course, when it's slower, I'm talking like specific calendar days, where it's slower, wherever you're gonna go, consider those times. I know this is very common sense, this one, but, Sometimes people just don't think about that. They're like, ah, it doesn't matter. I'll just go and have fun. Well, crowds can just, just drive you mad. 
um, to consider the right you know day, their time in terms of time of year, but also on a day-to-day basis. You know, consider, you know, is the park or is the beach or whatever it is, is it going to be really, really crowded today? In fact, one of the favorite times that for Amy and me to go and visit a theme park is when it is raining or when the weather is bad because we know people will tend to stay home. In fact, um, I'll put a card right up here, you know, what to do at Silver Dollar City, which is right here in Branson, Missouri, uh, in the rain. So we love when we hear it's going to be rainy or cold. I mean, we don't like it to be too cold because then it can get uncomfortable, but rain's not a big deal. And we love to go to the theme parks on those days because we know tons of other people won't. You know, um, uh, in fact, here in Branson, you know, we have, like I said, we own Escape Code and the Axe Game. And whenever it's rainy, people don't tend to go to Silver, Silver Dollar City, which is the theme park here. And so we'll notice people are, are starting to book um, experiences with us more on a rainy day. And so, because they want to do something that's indoors. Well, I'm kind of opposite. I, I know the crowds are going to be out of where I want to go when it's raining. So that's when we'll go. All right. So number 10, beat the crowds. Number 11, use apps, use apps, definitely use, you know, apps like flight aware. Um, of course, all of, all of your review apps like TripAdvisor, um, your park app, Silver Dollar City has an app, Disney World, of course, Universal has an app. You know, for me, when I travel, I travel a ton in terms of, uh, of flying. Um, I speak at conferences and I'll, and I'll travel by myself a lot. And so I'm using the, uh, the apps for uh, my trip, like TripIt. I'll use that as a great, great app. You can plan everything. Orbitz, I use that. Um, you know, like I said, FlightAware. So I can know when I'm, when I'm landing, I can look at my phone as my phone pops on where my gate is or did my gate move my, you know, for my connecting flight. And so all of that information. So use, use apps. All right. Number 12, number 12, Amy and I have talked about this before, maybe a little bit controversial. Leave the kids at home, leave them at home, especially if you have a large family. A lot of times what large families do is because it's very expensive to take care of everybody. They won't go on a vacation or maybe once every five or six years because because they can't afford it because their family is so huge and we totally understand that what amy and i do is we will go on trips by ourselves we value our our relationship right and so we will go by ourselves or sometimes we'll take one kid or two kids for example last time we went to orlando took um, one of my older sons parker took him with us previous time i believe we took my youngest daughter um eva and so we'll take one kid with us at a time or a couple kids. And every now and then we'll be able to do something as a whole family. And, but it doesn't happen very often. So don't worry about doing something as a whole family, establish that culture in your family and let, you know, so, so the, the so the tears dry up and people aren't sad forever. And they're like, okay, this is just the way we do things in our family. We kind of take turns and sometimes it's just mom and dad. And sometimes they're going to take just one kid and we're not going to throw a fit because it's not fair and all of that kind of stuff. And, and in fact, Parker, this last time he got to go with us because he paid his own way. A lot of it, he paid his own way. You know, we're like, Parker, we'd love for you to come. Um, you know, he's older. He's, he's, uh, 18 years old. Come on. You can buy your plane ticket. You can buy your, uh, park tickets and food, or I think we pay for his park tickets and food and yeah, you can come. So there's ways to do that. So you can travel more often if you have a large family. All right, next number 13. We're, we're, we're almost there. Everybody pack light. And this is something that's hard for me in the past. I would overpack and I'm even still tempted to overpack and, and I'll pack, you know, all these different kinds of pants and different kinds of shirts and you know, now when I, especially when we're going to, you know, Orlando, I'll buy, I'll bring a couple pairs of pants and I'll bring just t-shirts and that's it. I mean, that's not it. I mean, I'll bring, I'll bring, you know, everything else that I need, my toiletries and, um, you know, and my socks and underwear. And I mean, my point is, is pack as light as you can. You don't need outfits. You know, you're on vacation. You don't need to, you know, you don't need to have all of these different matching things take stuff where you can mix and match. It doesn't matter if you close your eyes and grab this pair of pants and, close, and grab this shirt and put them together and it'll work. You know, for me, it's whatever pants I have on and a white t-shirt and a jacket maybe, or a black t-shirt and that's it. And we're done and we're on our way. However, I will say this, make sure you take very comfortable shoes. Uh, a couple uh, trips ago, 
I, I had I had comfortable shoes on, shoes that I wear all the time. But for whatever reason, my feet started blistering. We were, we went to all four Disney parks and, and and both of the Universal parks, and so halfway through the trip, we were walking so much, my feet were blistering. So I actually had to order on Amazon. I got a pair of nice Doc Martens because I I know that they work for me. And so I ordered Doc Martens. They delivered them to my hotel room, and so then I'd wear those, and then I would and then I'd swap back and forth between the two pairs of shoes that I had, and it saved my feet. So pack lightly, but definitely consider uh, footwear. All right, number 14, this is obvious, but a lot of people don't do it. You need to search for discounts. Search, search, search. When we're traveling and we go to, uh, maybe we'll visit an escape room. We'll search online, you know, or so-and-so escape room discount code. We'll Google that and, or, or, and, and we'll see what pops up. And so often there are discounts to be had, discount codes. So when you're booking your escape room online or whatever it is that you're doing, pop that code in, you're saving 10, 20, 25% sometimes. So that's a big savings. Same thing with restaurants. So definitely, definitely search for discounts. You'll save a lot of money. And then number 15, um, I know I've said several of these are my favorite tips. This is probably my favorite, especially on longer trips, of course. TSA PreCheck. TSA pre-check by all means TSA pre-check and every every now and then Amy will she'll be the one that's booking our flights and she'll forget to put my TSA pre-check number in there and then we're at the airport and I look at my ticket and I'm like oh no I'm not pre TSA pre-check and so I'll have to take off my jacket and take off my shoes and take out my toiletries and take out my laptop and it's madness but if you have TSA pre-check not only do you usually get to go in the shortest line, but once you get there, keep your jacket on, keep keep your watch on, keep your keep your stuff, you know, keep your uh, uh, laptop in your bag. Don't have to get your toiletries out. None of that, and you just cruise right on through, and you're there. And there've been times when I've done pre TSA pre check. My wife doesn't have it, and I'll be through, and she'll uh, it'll be. 30, 40 minutes later and she'll finally make it through. So definitely TSA pre-check. It's like 80 bucks and it lasts five years and it's so easy to do. Definitely do that. All right, there you have it. 15 travel tips. Leave some comments. What do you think? What do you think about the whole leaving kids at home thing? What do you think about that? Uh, I know for a lot of you, it wouldn't feel like a family vacation and it, it would be weird. I get that. I understand that. Talk about that. I'd love to hear some some thoughts about that. Uh, what other tips? There's a there's many many more, and I'm gonna do more of these uh, travel tips uh, videos as time goes by. There's many more to talk about. What do you what do you think? Maybe I'll include one of your ideas in a future video. I'd love to do that. But uh, we really would appreciate it if you would uh, subscribe to this channel. That is crazy huge to us. Subscribe to this channel. Definitely uh, give us a thumbs up. You know, hit subscribe and then ding that bell and you'll be notified every time a new video is uploaded and these videos are coming to you a few times a week all right that's all i got everybody hey where are you going on vacation next tell me about that i'd love to hear it all right see you next time